Rule 6. Safe speed. Every vessel shall at all times proceed at a safe speed so that she can take proper and effective action to avoid collision and be stopped within the distance appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and conditions. In determining a safe speed, the following factors shall be among those taken into account. Number one, the state of visibility. Obviously, on a clear day, you can see quite a long way away from whatever your height of eye is to the horizon. Yeah. So in this example, between the maroon and the yellow ship, we're looking at a distance of six miles. However, this might be reduced down to three miles in restricted visibility. So that would determine a slower speed to be a safe speed because we can't see as far. Here's a second example between a sports boat and a classic sailing yacht. Lower decks mean they probably can't see as far, maybe five miles to the horizon. In restricted visibility, this could be reduced further to less than a thousand meters, very poor visibility. The second thing you have to take into account, the traffic density, including concentrations of fishing vessels or any other vessels. What that means is if you're in a nice open sea area like the purple container ship here, then we can go a little bit faster as there's no hazards around. There's no other traffic that might cause potential collision situations. Whereas now the traffic is much denser and we're going to have to be going slower so that we can obey the rules and avoid a collision at all costs. We may have to go slower still if all this traffic, the same number of ships, was now squeezed into a narrow channel. Now the space is restricted for everybody, so everybody will go slower to determine that safe speed. Third thing you have to take into account, the manoeuvrability of the vessel with special reference to stopping distance and turning ability in the prevailing conditions. Obviously, if we look at our sports boat as an example again, the sports boat can turn around and stop very quickly within its own length sometimes, depending on the conditions. Whereas if we look at our purple container ship again, that purple container ship may take three miles to slow down and stop with a much wider turning circle. It's therefore, if the situation dictates, going to have to go at a slower speed in order to be, maintain that safe parameter. An extra consideration with sailing vessels is the fact that they can't go directly into the wind, so they're hampered in their manoeuvrability straight away by having 45% of the sea room that they can't use. On to the fourth thing, at night, the presence of background light, such as from shore lights or from backscatter of her own lights. Here on a clear night, we can see very easily the masthead light and the port side aspect light of a power driven vessel. However, in a lot of coastal passages, those lights may well be, be obscured by a city in the coast behind them and be much harder to spot. Therefore, a slower speed and a better lookout would be appropriate as things are now harder for us to see. Another look at the same power driven vessel in the, in the dark on a clear night. Our own masthead light behind us can absolutely obliterate what we can see. Number five, the state of wind, sea and current and the proximity of navigational hazards. Here's an example of that with the maroon ship then. If we have a strong wind or tide on the beam of the vessel, that's going to cause us to set and drift either downwind or down tide as we travel. What we can do to offset that sometimes is to increase our speed. We'll still set downwind or down tide, but the effect will be lessened because our speed is increased. Therefore, you can see that it's not always best and safest to go at a slow speed. Sometimes a faster speed is more appropriate. Sixth consideration, the draft in relation to the available depth of water. Here we're really referring to squat on larger vessels. Squat effect is the hydrodynamic phenomenon by which a vessel moving quickly through shallow water creates an area of lower pressure that causes the ship to be closer to the seabed than would otherwise be expected. This can cause accidental groundings, for example. Therefore, it's better for the vessel, the vessel to move slowly because the effect of squat is diminished. Part B. Additionally, by vessels with operational radar, the characteristics, efficiency and limitations of the radar equipment. Here we're talking about the positioning, the beam length, pulse width, all that sort of stuff. 
any constraints imposed by the radar range scale in use. So if we have our radar range scale set to six miles, we're not going to get notified of vessels or targets that are within 12 miles. Therefore, we may have to go slower because we're looking at a much narrower field of view. The effect on radar detection of the sea state, weather and other sources of interference. So anything causing scatter on the screen that we can't control via the gain control might cause us to slow down. The possibility that small vessels, ice and other floating objects may not be detected by radar at an adequate range. This would mean we would have to slow down, particularly in coastal waters where there are leisure vessels around. The number, location and movement of vessels detected by radar. So if you have a lot of targets on the radar screen, this is the same as in part A, where we're looking at density of traffic. And then the more exact assessment of the visibility that may be possible when radar is used to determine the range of vessels or other objects in the vicinity. Again, the same as in part A, visibility is going to have an impact on what we do. And that concludes rule six, safe speed. It's important to put these in a list in your head because they keep cropping up later in the rules. Other rules such as rule 19 specifically refer to a safe speed and this is what it's referring to, this list of considerations that we must take into account.